Once you have your design vetted to the point where you start envisioning how the course will be structured in the online environment, you should start the implementation process. I do need to caution you at this point. Don't try to get the design perfect, but rather get it to the point that it will be functional. If you find that as you start to implement your design, you'll have to make many adjustments. There are many factors you need to take into account as you move from the design to the implementation. At minimum, you'll want to consider where does this unit or module fit into the overall course map or design? How is your instructional design approach realized in the unit or module? Where are you sharing the main course goal or outcomes with your learners? How does this unit or module align the outcomes, goals, activities, and assessment? Is this module student-centered or teacher-led? What is the scope or range of the instructor's role? Are they a presenter, a facilitator, a coach, a mentor? Is the course blended or fully online? How are you introducing yourself and building the learning community? What is the ratio of percentage of synchronous versus asynchronous collaboration? How will you address infrastructure, system, and support needs and issues that the learner may face? These key questions and considerations are included in the handbook. There may also be instructional or functional issues that the learning management system, what we commonly refer to as the LMS, or other tools that will force you to make adjustments. Just consider this part of the process. Similarly, you'll need to keep in mind that the course will need to be continually adjusted and the first few times that you run it, it will have to change. I have found that my online courses really start to reach a point of flow by the second or third iteration. Most often, I'm taking things away that are necessary or adding a key idea or video or a bit of text that improves the flow. Don't be surprised by the fact that you may need to strip things away to increase the effectiveness of your course. More isn't always better. Over the years, I've learned to use a minimalist approach I now refer to as, if I can just get them to do this, or if I could just get them to do that, or apply this, and so on, when I look at the flow of each section of my design and the course. I'll be referring to this if I could just get them to perspective often. You also don't have to get the full course up before you share it with your peers or colleagues. Because I use a modular approach, I'll get the overview, the first section, or the first module up. Once I have these two parts ready to go, I start the sharing process to get feedback. And I also arrange for usability testing um, that we will expand upon in the next module. Do not discount the power of another set of eyes or sets of eyes. By the time you start putting your resources up in the LMS or whatever digital space you are using, you have more than likely been thinking about and working with these ideas for several weeks. You are so close to the material that you will often overlook small but significant details that the other eyes will catch. Using the if I can just get them to perspective, I consider what is the minimum that I need to convey to help my learners get started. In most cases, this will include a welcome and an overview video, a link to the course handbook, outline, syllabus, a link to a schedule or pacing document, a link to announcements form, a link to Zoom or other course meeting tools. You may notice that I do not directly include contact information in this first section. I actually do have this information in part of my welcome section. And by the time my students have logged into my course, I will have communicated with them two to three times via email and included my contact information. Your institution may require you to have this information in this section. So you will have to make adjustments according to the requirements of your institution. I try to keep my overview or view first section down to five or six items or links because any more than that, your student may become overwhelmed. I also point to links rather than the full document because seeing five to six links on a page is less overwhelming than scrolling through pages and pages of information. Research has shown that many people ignore step-by-step -step instructions, so if you organize information in links that your user can then choose to view in any order, you increase the likelihood of having that information read. I will be going 
into much greater detail in the implementation example, but I still want to provide an overview of the module structure that I found most effective. Remember, I'm still using the if I could just get them to minimalist perspective when I set up my modules, which will once again include five to seven items, an overview video and a script, additional supporting videos providing key ideas, module activity instructions, activity supporting documents, resources and links, a discussion forum, discussion supporting video or supporting documents, a submission section, most of my subsequent modules will follow this format or something similar and will more than likely have four to five items. Once again, I must stress the importance of not overwhelming your learner. If your LMS allows you to just show the top level view of your course that can fit into one page and a student then can click on headings to expand each module, this is a very helpful design. It gives the learner some control over the process and they will not be overwhelmed with too much information all at one time. Now, you might be thinking, but what about all the other resources that you need to include in your course? Where do you put all those? I create a resources section and break it into modules and put the additional resources for each of the modules in this section. I have it at the bottom of, of my initial page. I warn my students that while these resources are useful, they need to discern what they will need to complete their learning activities. I will point my learners to what they need to, at minimum, successfully complete the learning opportunity, but also encourage them to go beyond the minimum. The key from an outcome space constructivist perspective is to give your learner control over how far or deep they need to go. Once you have the overview and the first module or two complete, you'll need to create your implementation video, which should incorporate a screen capture approach like Kaltura, Screencast-O-Matic, KenPage, etc., where the key components of your implementation are shared and fully narrated. The video can be uploaded using my media or other media system and posted or embedded into the implementation form, and you can receive and moderate asynchronous collaboration. Or you can post this to your own website or blog or LMS or other digital collaborative space and share the link. Look forward to the feedback that you will receive and use it to make the necessary revisions to your course and its design.